everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. I'm back with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and we are on week two of Cobra Month 2015. This month, I am looking at some Cobra toys that I've been putting on for a while because I think they're just too special for our regular weekly review. I thought they deserved a special spotlight. And we're looking at one of those important action figures this week, Major Blood. Major Blood was a mercenary working for Cobra. He wasn't a member of Cobra in the same sense that the Baroness was. So you might ask, does Major Blood even qualify for Cobra Month? And the answer is, yes he does because I say so. I had a special love for this figure as a kid. He's just so unique and he's like the quintessential bad guy. So I'm really looking forward to this review. Let's go ahead and take a look at the toy. This is Major Blood, the mercenary that worked with G.I. Joe's enemy, Cobra. Major Blood was first available in early 1983 as a mail-in exclusive offer. He was not available in retail stores. And there was something a little unusual about the mail-in offer for Major Blood in that you could not use your flag points uh, to get this figure. When I say flag points, what I'm talking about is on the packaging that the figures and the vehicles came in that was printed a flag point value and you could clip these out and send them off for special mail away offers. The offer for Major Blood was different though because instead of sending in these flag points Hasbro asked kids to clip out the faces from the front of the card. According to Kirk Bozigian, the head of marketing for Hasbro's boy toys division at the time, a Hasbro executive Bob Prupus had the kids cut out the faces in order to get them to go out and buy more action figures. What kids would normally do with these cards is just clip out the file card, clip out the flag point, and throw the rest away. Well, if you did that and you wanted to mail away uh, Major Blood, you'd have to go buy more action figures so you could clip out the faces. Later in 1983, Major Blood was released on a card back for sale in retail stores. So he's one of the rare figures and maybe the only figure to be released as a mail-in offer and at retail in the same year. Let's take a look at Major Blood's accessories. He came with a weapon, and the contents of the card on which Major Blood was packaged call this a rocket launcher. This is a rocket launching pistol, and the tip here is the rocket that it supposedly launches off. Uh, this is not a model of a real-world rocket launcher. Uh, typically, rocket launchers are shoulder-fired for obvious reasons. Rocket Rocket launcher pistols do exist, but they fire smaller bullet-sized rockets rather than this big honkin' thing. You can see the rocket fins here, so this entire piece right here is supposed to be the rocket. There were later versions of this accessory made with minor differences in the mold, so pay attention to those small differences. There were also accessory pack versions of this pistol molded in different colors, so take note of the color. The original is straight black. This is not a very practical accessory. Accessory. In order to aim it, Major Blood is going to have to look directly down the back end of the rocket, and the rocket blast is going to hit him right in the face. That's why most rocket launchers and recoilless rifles are shoulder fired. Major Blood's other accessory is his backpack, which carries the rockets that go on his rocket launching pistol. There are three sculpted on rockets on this backpack. They are not removable, they are just sculpted on. Uh, but one thing that is nice is the sculpting on the rockets on the backpack more or less match the sculpting on the gun. So that's a nice coordination between accessories. Let's take a look at the articulation on Major Blood. He did not have the typical articulation of G.I. Joe action figures at the time, and mainly because of this right arm. This right arm was articulated at the shoulder, but not at the elbow. Typical arm articulation for G.I. Joe of that 1983 series uh, had articulation at the shoulder. It could swing up and swivel around, uh, and it had articulation articulation at the elbow, uh, and it had a swivel at the bicep, it could swivel the arm all the way around. Not so with Major Blood. Other than that, he could move his head from left to right, and his left arm did have the typical articulation for action figures at the time. It could swing up and swivel around. It could bend at the elbow about 90 degrees. It could swivel at the bicep all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside.
side and allowed the figure to move at the torso a little bit. Uh, he could move his legs apart about so far. He could move his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Major Blood and there is so much to look at. There are many points of interest on this figure. On his head he has a black helmet that is not removable. It is molded onto his head and he has an eye patch over his left eye and that looks great. I mean this guy really looks very interesting. He has a very prominent mustache and that is a porn stash if I've ever seen one. Even though Major Blood is a mercenary, meaning he is an independent operator working for Cobra, the helmet is a nice visual association with Cobra in that it looks a lot like the traditional Cobra soldier's helmet, only in black instead of blue. On his chest, Major Blood has a black armored chest plate over a brown shirt, and that detail continues around to the black. That looks like a bulletproof vest. And on his armored chest plate, we see dog tags, lots of dog tags, and we assume these are trophies of war taken from enemies he has defeated. This is where we get to that right arm, and the right arm has some very nice looking armor plating on it, and interestingly, it looks like his right hand only has three fingers. We have two large fingers there and a thumb and the fingers are sculpted uh, together they actually come together at, a, at the tip there uh, that's different from the typical c-shaped uh, hand of a typical gi joe action figure that arm and the hand is just so weird and unusual and another great point of interest on this figure it's long been speculated whether this arm is just armor plated or if it's a cybernetic arm or something like that uh, hasbro's character designer ron rudat uh, has said that this arm was intended to be a robot arm so we have to assume major blood lost his real arm in battle somewhere and he acquired or built this robotic replacement. Groovy. Major Blood's left arm may not be robotic, but it still has many points of interest. It has this patch here. It looks like a shield-shaped patch uh, in green with what looks like stripes on it. Um, I don't know if this represents some real-world patch, but I have not been able to find a match for it. We have another sculpted-on patch here on the forearm. Looks like some kind of insignia. And sculpting here on the underside of the forearm. And we even have some sculpting on the black glove. This is really nice detail for this left arm. The waist piece is very plain. It doesn't even have a belt sculpted on it. Uh, it's kind of odd. Uh, this is the one part of the figure where the detail is kind of lacking. These upper legs were reused for Duke. You can see on Duke that's the same sculpted pistol on there, uh, just different color plastic, uh, same upper legs on both of them. Major Blood did come out before Duke did, so Major Blood can claim original ownership of those parts. Major Blood was made of entirely unique parts at the time. Duke was made up of almost no unique parts. And finally, Major Blood has some nice tall black Wellington boots that are just perfect for this design. Really nicely done. Let's take a look at the file card. These file cards were printed on the back of the card on which the action figure was packaged. You can see some of the artwork from the front of the card there. Obviously, the mail-in Major Blood did not come packaged on a card. Those file cards were printed with a plain red backing. Neither of these file cards are red back cards. There is a textual difference between these cards, though, and this is the first version of the text. The card shows his fact as G.I. Joe, which is incorrect. This really should say Cobra. Even though he's an independent mercenary, he did work exclusively with Cobra. He definitely was not a member of G.I. Joe. This mistake of putting the faction as G.I. Joe is a mistake they often made with these enemy agents working for Cobra, including Destro and Zartan. They really should not have had G.I. Joe down here. Um, that's just wrong. For later file cards on characters that they didn't necessarily want to include as Cobra characters, they started putting the enemy down here, and that's a better way to do it. It says up here he's a mercenary, and a mercenary is a soldier for hire. So rather than fighting for duty or for country, he fights for money. And as long as Cobra is paying him, he fights for Cobra. His codename 
is Major Blood, and that isn't really a code name. That is his rank, Major, and his real last name. His file name is Sebastian Blood, which is an appropriately villainous real name. His primary military specialty is Terrorist, which, oddly enough, is the secondary military specialty of Destro. So in many ways, Major Blood and Destro are in the same business but these guys do not like each other. I think Destro considers Major Blood to be unprincipled and honorless. Although it's never specifically stated, I would think that Major Blood would consider Destro to be a naive idealist. It's kind of odd to think of Destro being naive or an idealist, but that's just how I think these guys would see each other. His secondary military specialty is weapons and tactics, his birthplace is Sydney, Australia, and his grade is O for Major. Uh, where exactly he achieved this major rank is not clear. Maybe in the Australian Army, maybe in one of the other military forces he worked for, uh, not clear. This section says, Blood received initial military training in the Australian Special Air Service. This is referring to the Special Air Service Regiment, or SASR, although they're commonly referred to as the SAS. It's an Australian Special Forces Unit. And since this is a Special Forces Unit, I wouldn't think he would get his initial military training there. I would think he would get advanced military training. Later joined the French Foreign Legion. And the French Foreign Legion is a wing of the French army that is made for foreign nationals that are willing to serve and fight with the French military. Worked as military advisor in a number of countries and is currently wanted for crimes in Rhodesia and Libya. It's not exactly clear where these references come from, but Rhodesia may be referring to the Rhodesian Bush War of 1964 to 1969. Libya may be referring to the mob attack on U.S. Embassy in Tripoli uh, in December of 1979. Often, these file cards associated Cobra operatives with parts of the world where the United States had foreign policy problems. Proficient with every form of infantry weapon in current use, Blood has a tactical mind like a steel trap. Qualified expert all NATO and Warsaw Pact small arms. This bottom section says, Major Blood writes poetry badly. When you're feeling low and woozy, slap a fresh clip in your Uzi, assume the proper firing stance, and make the suckers jump and dance. In parentheses, from the Attica Gazette. This poem is the section of text that changed in later versions of the file card. This version of the file card had a different poem. This file card has the poem as, a mercenary's job is a heartless one. I'm a soldier for hire like a pawn shop gun. My ruthless tactics keep you on on your toes, cause I fight them all, whether friends or foes. Again, this is from the Attica Gazette. Both of these poems are pretty bad. I mean, they're not exactly Vogon poetry, but still pretty bad. These cards don't necessarily contradict each other. He could have had two poems published in the Attica Gazette. Attica could be a reference to the region of Greece, which includes the capital Athens. Um, there is no newspaper there called the Attica Gazette, though. Or this could be a reference to Attica, New York which was the location of a prison riot in 1971. Maybe Major Blood was there. In issue number three of G.I. Joe Order of Battle, the miniseries published by Marvel Comics, uh, Major Blood is on page 15, and this version of the file card reprinted in this comic book has the second version of the poem, the one that starts with, a mercenary's job is a heartless one. Looking at this figure overall, this is a great design. I mean, the black and the brown is a fantastic combination. And with his eye patch and his mustache and his robotic arm, he looks very villainous. I mean, you could never think that this guy is a good guy. And even though he doesn't have a cobra symbol anywhere on him, uh, his black helmet is a nice visual cue that a associates him with Cobra. This black and brown color scheme is a nice break from what we usually got with Cobra action figures, which were either mostly blue or almost entirely black. The lower half of the figure is a bit plain, but appropriate. Collectors love detail, but if detail is overdone, it can ruin the overall design of the figure. It can make the figure look too busy. This figure has many untold stories to tell, like where did he get all those dog tags, and how did he 
get his robotic arm? And what happened to his eye? There are so many points of interest to this figure, and a kid playing with this figure could make up any story he wanted to. I'm not as fond of the accessories, mainly this rocket pistol, which is not a very practical weapon. But it is very unique, I'll give him that. I have to give him an A plus for creativity. In the G.I. Joe animated series, Major Blood was voiced by Michael Bell, the same actor who portrayed Duke. But the voice Michael Bell gave to Major Blood did not sound Australian at all. Now we'll clear out the Joe team and claim what is rightfully ours! In the G.I. Joe comic book, I don't recall Major Blood being written with any kind of accent at all. And in the animated series, he sounded more like British commoner than Australian. So he sounded more like this. Ah, oh, there he is. Oi, Trigger! Here. Know my brother, don't you, eh? Yeah, of course I do. How you going, Dave? Then like this. Just kids having fun. You all right? In the G.I. Joe comic book, Major Blood was initially hired by Cobra Commander to kill Destro. Major Blood's assassination attempt against Destro resulted in the Baroness being badly burned and captured by G.I. Joe. Later, Major Blood rescued the Baroness from G.I. Joe and got her reconstructive surgery. Later, the Baroness and Major Blood plotted to assassinate Cobra Commander using a child assassin named Billy, who turned out to be Cobra Commander's son. At one point, it seemed like Major Blood might have become Destro's rival for the affections of the Baroness. Now, it's a bad idea to get in the middle of other people's relationship anyway. It's an even worse idea if the other guy is someone who will happily kill you in the face. Despite a few flaws with the figure and the accessories, I'm still going to put Major Blood as a top tier figure. I was super jazzed about getting this figure as a kid. Uh, I didn't get him as a mail away. I had to wait uh, for him to come out on the card and it was just so awesome. He was very important to Cobra. He was probably more important to Cobra in my playtime than he was in any of the G.I. Joe media. So the mystery and the excitement surrounding this figure has to catapult him to the top tier. That was my review of Major Blood and the second installment of Cobra Month 2015. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up on YouTube, and don't forget to subscribe. I've got a lot of great new G.I. Joe toy reviews coming up, and more Cobra reviews coming up this month. You do not want to miss them. And don't forget to like the Facebook page. You get a lot of updates there you don't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week with Week 3 of Cobra Month. G.I. Joe is beating us. We need a new plan, Destro. A night attack. Night attack and Major Blood will lead. Major Blood is a dangerous foe. Framed by Destro, the enemy of G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe, American hero. Fighting Cobra and Destro. They chased us up and captured a Cobra officer. That's part of my plan. <laughs> what does Destro mean? Follow the further adventures of G.I. Joe in Marvel Comics. <laughs> Knife. That's a knife.